extent it, the twins were presented that ball, so it's on display. Uh, another guy hears the story in the paper, calls me up from South Dakota and says, I have the last pitch ever thrown. <laughs> and, and, and I said, how'd you get it? He said, in a drawing. He said, I was there. Well, I was. I got home plate that day from a guy. And he said, I got, he said, uh, I got it because nobody, they called off a number and another ticket number and neither people were there. And uh, one of the twin execs looked up and says, anybody want this ball? And he flipped it up and I got it. And so I had him down, he threw out the first pitch, and uh, <coughs> we've got that on display. So it's that kind of stuff. I, I collect stuff from way back when. Uh, I've got, as I mentioned, it's a whole long presentation of its own, how I got 7,000 items, but I knew Cal Griffith real well. And all because I said thank you back in 1966. Long story short, 1966, I'm a first year teacher. I'm opening up my mail that fall in workshop. And there's a letter to the baseball coach, which I was going to be. I open up the letter, and there's a free season pass for the 66 season, the year after they won the World Series. And so that weekend, I'm 21 and single. I got my three buddies, because it said four people, in the cheap seats. And I was brought up to say thank you. So I went out early and looked up Cal Griffith's office. And his secretary said, he's in a bad mood today. And I wouldn't go in there. And I said, well, I want to thank you. Well, then he'll see you. So I go in Cal's office, and he looks up and says, what do you want? If you, any of you ever knew him, he was an old curmudgeon. He really was. He had a great heart, but he could scare adults, okay, sometimes. <laughs> and so I said, I want to thank you. For what? And I showed him the pass. I, 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 that was cool. And, and he looked at me and he said, what the heck's wrong with you? And I said, well, what do you mean? And he said, I've been giving those things away, he said, for six months, and you're the first blankety blank that ever thanked me. What's wrong with you? <laughs> and I said, hey, I was brought up to say thanks, and that's all I'm doing. So thank you. And I couldn't wait to get out of there, to be honest. And he said, wait a minute, wait a minute. He took me back, and he brought me back to the secretary. And she said, I don't know to yell, and she said, see, I told you. And I said, I know. <laughs> and he said, write down your name. What is it? Clyde Geppner. So I wrote it down. He said, now follow me. And I still remember it. Down the hall, to the left, to the right, and we were out in the Griffith seats. And he said, when you come to a game, you don't have to sit out there with those thankless son of a guns. You sit in your family. <laughs> <laughs> and so I got to sit in there with the family over the years. And I got to know. See, Cal and his sister were adopted. Their birth name was Robertson. <laughs> And they were adopted by Uncle Clark, who owned the Senators. And, uh, and his three younger brothers were not adopted. They kept the birth name, but they worked for the Twins. The only people on the Twins staff that made more than his brothers was Harmon Kilgore. He played his brothers very well. I've got all the... So then you jump ahead. And when they moved out, when they moved out of the, uh, the Met Stadium to the Metronome, he found out he had to rent storage space by the square foot. And he was too frugal to pay any money to anybody. So he told his brothers, throw the stuff. Well, at first they went through the, all of the stuff. What stuff? The stuff that came from Washington, D.C. when the Senators became the Twins. And at first they'd open up some stuff and show it to Cal. He said, I told you, I'm not paying storage to those guys. Throw it. So they didn't even go through it. They just threw it. And every night for 37 nights, I went out to Met Stadium. And there'd be a corner. And some nights there'd be 20 boxes. And some nights there'd be 40 boxes and so forth. And I usually got out of there about 1 in the morning, and I'd go through the stuff. And what I didn't want, I had to put in the dumpster right outside the door. But And there were times that it was winning the lottery. Uh, one time there was a file cabinet inside where letters from presidents of the United States regarding the first pitch ever thrown uh, in a season. They'd start baseball a day early in the nation's capital, and the president would throw out the first pitch. Uh, uh, to give you an idea of the way the letters would go, Eisenhower's going to throw out the first pitch. So there's a letter from Ike saying, I just got the word. You're going to have me throw out the first pitch. I'm really looking forward to it. Then there's a letter from Rawlings saying, we're sending out a glove. If you look at the pictures, a lot of times the presidents are wearing a glove. Rawlings or Wilson, they had a competition. <coughs> because now you'd have your glove in the picture and free advertisement. So they're sending out a glove with Ike's name on it. Then there was a letter saying, we are sending out a second glove because we heard Ike is not going to throw out the first pitch. He's going to go golfing instead, which <laughs> Ike liked to do. Then there's a letter from his vice president, Nixon, saying, I just heard I get to throw out the first pitch. <laughs> then there's another letter from Rawlings saying, we're sending a glove with Nixon's name on it. Please hold the Eisenhower glove for later in the year. Mm -hmm. And then there's a letter from Harry S. Truman, former President Truman. 
And he said, I read in the paper where Nixon, who he couldn't stand, I read in the paper where Nixon is going to throw out the first pitch. Don't let him throw you a curve. <laughs> now, think of the history in that correspondence. You know, And I was between a box there and a dumpster there. I was between that and the landfill. When people say what it's worth, I've never given a money value. I hate talking about values and money. But to the history of the game, think of it. There were letters in there from Babe Ruth and Ty Cobb and, and uh, regarding old-timers games and on and on and on. You know, I mean, it was just unbelievable for a history teacher to stumble on all of this for the history of the game, for the history of the United States.